But the big thing they want to do is uh, bring about what's called stakeholder capitalism. That's the big one. We'll go into that a little bit later because I do have the receipts on that. There is a book on it. Um, so right off the bat, uh, I find it very interesting that all of the top right wing sort of influence accounts are, are saying the World Economic Forum is trying to do a communism. Because you, you can't do a communism and a capitalism. You can't really do both. It's, yeah. it, it's not, that's not how any of this works, guys. They're contradicting theories. It's oil and water. But he's, he's trying to do a different capitalism. And I saw a really funny meme. I saw a really, this was such a, I wish I could find it. But it's like throughout history, let's do this type of capitalism. Let's do this type of capitalism. And every time there's just like fire and people like dying and shit. And then at the end, it's burning itself down. And then it's Klaus at the end doing, let's do stakeholder capitalism. And then people are like, surely it'll work this time. It's like, we're just, it's, I think my personal take is I think stakeholder capitalism is just another rebranding of just capitalism trying to compromise with a system that naturally is incentivized to not compromise with everyday working class people. I think it's half rebranding and I think maybe it's half a little more sinister than that, but uh, we'll get into that right now. Actually, I would assume it's going to be more sinister than that, just based on historical preference or precedence. Sorry. I mean, it could just be like, you know, we're, we're, done, we're done with the neoliberalism thing. It's just fascism now. I'm sorry. Get in the cage. Yeah. Like, welcome. Well, welcome. This is, this is your new prison. Yes, we will brand you. Mm-hmm. You're a little work cow now. But I digress. Let's, uh, let's get into it. Yes, it is blindingly bright. Apologies. For decades, some of the world's most powerful people have gathered nearly every January at a ski resort in the Swiss mountains called Davos. Through its annual week of meetings, the World Economic Forum offers ultra-rich corporate leaders a chance to set out their vision for the future of business. For many of them, if that doesn't just say it right there, guys, I, like, I, I don't know what to say. This is, this is the Financial Times saying this. Like, if they can't even, like, put a bow on it, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Mm. Them, and for the WEF's founder, Klaus Schwab, the central philosophy can be boiled down to a snappy two-word phrase, stakeholder capitalism. But what does stakeholder capitalism actually mean? And is it necessarily a good thing? The term gained traction in the mid-1980s, a time when politicians like Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher were promoting the idea that widespread prosperity could be created by unleashing the animal spirits of profit-seeking capitalism. Their policies were built upon the ideas of economists like Milton Friedman, who famously wrote that there was one and only one social responsibility of business, to use its resources and engage in activities designed to increase its profits so long as it stays within the rules of the game. The doctrine of stakeholder capitalism took off as a reaction against this philosophy. It holds that corporate boards and executives should not simply try to serve their shareholders by increasing profits, but should pay equal attention to the interests of other stakeholders, such as customers, employees, and society as a whole. Who could have a problem with that? Actually, a large and growing number of people. The stakeholder capitalist drive has come under attack from the right, 
with conservative politicians arguing that it could conflict with legally enshrined fiduciary duty to investors. Meanwhile, other critics of the stakeholder capitalism agenda say that it's enabling super wealthy corporate leaders and investors to take an unhealthily powerful role in shaping how society responds to urgent social and environmental problems. They worry it could also hinder progress towards tough new regulations by keeping the focus on what companies can do voluntarily. So, is stakeholder capitalism a vital means of achieving a fairer, more enlightened world economy? Or a dangerous idea that will strengthen the power of an unaccountable global elite? That's an important question to consider as you track the conversations taking place at Davos. Yeah, so... That's, <laughs> I don't know what to say. That's, that's what they're looking to implement. So a couple things here. The takeaway here is, as I understand it, corporations are essentially going to have a, uh, a role, so to speak, a, a, a seat at the table, so to speak, when it comes to governance. Um, that's kind of how the stakeholder capitalism thing works. And again, the, the branding is good because the branding has to be good. Um, <clears throat> because if the branding's not good, people are going to, people are going to connect the dots real quick. Mm -hmm. And they're like, wait, so governments and corporations just like working hand in hand. Wait, I know that. I, I, I learned about that in history class. They weren't on the right side. They were on the bad they side. The same term, though. Something different. Hmm. Yeah. Like, wait, how, did, how does that go? First they came for the who? Oh, no. I don't like oh. that. So they're rebranding they're re it, and I feel like the right is kind of feeding into this a lot. Because they're trying to paint it as this like ultra left commie sort of situation. But if you go look up, and again, guys, look this up on your own. There's there's a lot of resources on stakeholder capitalism. Uh, I believe they have a Wikipedia page. Let me double check that real quick. They have to. They're 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 remarkably uh What is stakeholder capitalism from Investopedia? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a, oh, I think, it, it, yeah, Investopedia seems to have a pretty positive, uh, positive perspective on stakeholder capitalism. I'm uh, shocked. Can't believe that would happen. Um, yeah, actually, I'm going to do a little on the fly stuff real quick. Just, um, so the World Economic Forum has a breakdown of it too. So like you said, Yeti, a lot of this stuff is only popping out in the last little while. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So stakeholder capitalism is a form of capitalism in which companies seek long-term value creation by taking into account the needs of all their stakeholders in society at large. And if you're asking yourself, but Himbo, how can they do that when the nature of capitalism is contradictory to that? Great question, one I can't answer. <laughs> These days, a lot of political and business leaders debate whether stakeholder capitalism would provide us with a better way to organize the economy. What exactly is stakeholder capitalism and where does it originate? In this blog adapted from our book, Stakeholder Capitalism, a Global Economy that Works for Progress, People, and Planet, we like to tackle this question and provide the reader with a clear answer. Of course, it's like obnoxiously big. Look at this shit. It's half the page, guys. Did Klaus himself like boomer this? Like, it looks like they got a kid to draw it, too. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like. Something. I feel like that's intentional, though, because they need to make it seem as like harmless as possible. Because look, no, that's oh, a good so point. Cute. I like that. Actually, I got that. I got that. It's so cute. It's like a kid drew it. There can't be anything nefarious behind this. History. 
The stakeholder concept goes a long way back, more than 50 years. I first wrote about it in 1971 when I was a young business academic, but it roots, its roots go even further. In the 1950s and 1960s, it was quite natural for a company and its CEO to consider not just shareholders, but everyone who has a stake in the success of a firm. That is the core of stakeholder capitalism. It is a form in which companies do not only optimize short-term profits for shareholders, but seek long-term value creation by taking into account the needs of all their stakeholders and society at large. Okay, so they got it. Literally, what they sold capitalism as. <laughs> like they're, I know. they're literally <laughs> redoing the exact same thing. Like, look, guys, I know last time we told you capitalism works. Okay, we were a little wrong. So this time, we're trying super capitalism. <laughs> it's literally just we got super capitalism. Capitalism. We got this, guys. Capitalism. Now with extra fries. <laughs> so you got businesses in the middle. So I don't know about you, but we're already not off to a great start. Business in the front, corruption in the back. It's a mullet of reality. So the, the central focus of this, this, little, this little image here is businesses at the core. Right off the bat, I'm a little a little nervous. I don't know yeah. why. <laughs> because you're putting all these other people. Yeah. Just state and society just to the side there. They just work together. State and society and businesses, this shit right here, that's a that's the part they want you to like gloss over. It's like, wait, wait, what, what do you mean? What do you mean they're working state with the government? And society. <laughs> And I mean, businesses on and, everything. Yeah, that's and business and economy. That one's a little goofy. It's like, isn't that kind of isn't that just how that works? Let lenders. I don't. Yeah. Well, anyway. see, and see, like banks and lenders. That's what I really need to see get well and corporations. But like, that's where a lot of the big issues come from, because banks. Make it easier to buy, spend more money, but it makes them more money. But people will always revert to like, oh, well, I can get a little nicer vehicle now, but I'll just have to pay some interest on it. Mm -hmm. I just noticed we can make this a little bigger. I'm I'm not going to Newfoundland. I'm going to Nova Scotia. I'm going to Cape Breton, and uh, we might be leaving in a few weeks. So. Okay, Sorry, I just what, to answer the question. What the fuck is this? What is, what is this supposed to side of some shite. What is this supposed to mean? Look, guys, you know what it looks like? Have you ever seen those couples' toilets they made a joke about? Where they can skin <laughs> each other, like, facing each other while you're pooping? <laughs> That's what they've done. You can poop while you, on the people and the planet simultaneously. All right, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna kill everybody with reading this whole thing, but this this I'm I'm looking at is looks to be a little important. Now again, I just pulled this up off the fly. The key stakeholders and their objectives: profits, purpose, prosperity, and peace. Ooh, alliteration. Yeah, this this is already already weird because I feel like you're trying to sell me too fucking hard here. <laughs> To ensure that both people and the planet prosper, four key stakeholders play a crucial role. They are governments of countries, states, and local communities, civil society from unions to NGOs, from schools and universities to action groups, companies constituting the private sector, whether freelancers or large multinational companies. Great. They're going to even keep contract workers. They're even keeping the gig economy. <clears throat> oh, great. That, that great economy where nobody has any power because all the workers are just cattle. Yeah. And the international community, consisting of international organizations such as the UN, as well as regional organizations such as the European Union or ASEAN. Oh, and to counter a small point that I've seen right-wingers kind of run with here. They're like, oh, well, Xi Jinping has spoken at the World Economic Forum. There must be some sinister stuff behind that. Guys, I need to explain 
the, I need to explain to y'all how China works because we don't know better because we live in the West. In the West, our governments predominantly answer to business. We an, they answer to the billionaire class. In China, the billionaire class has to answer to the state. So this isn't really like a thing he even has to kind of go along with here because they can't pull any shit. If they do, China's got an answer for it. <laughs> Trust me. They're, they're not afraid to jail a billionaire, and they don't stop there without making this a little bit uh, not friendly for kids. <clears throat> All these stakeholders crucially consist of people and make use of the planet. It is no surprise, then, that they should want to optimize the well-being of all of us as well as that of the environment. R really? Because, like, we have capitalism now, and it just doesn't do that at all. So, so why is it no surprise? It's a big surprise, because we're not seeing any of that in the real world. I'm not seeing anything in the real world. But I digress. But equally, it should be clear that they have specific objectives that make them distinct organisms in the first place. Governments focus on creating the greatest possibly, the greatest possibly prosper, the greatest poss. Am I having a stroke or is this just not a sentence that works? Do you smell burnt toast? Government no. focuses on creating the greatest possibly prosperity. <laughs> that is a horrible, horrible <laughs> sentence. Okay. Do they not okay, get some good. writers in here? God. I think Klaus Hire did them. this. I think Klaus did this after like a six pack. For the greatest number of people. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. I, I love possibly prosperity for the greatest. <laughs> See, there's never any actual numbers. It's just soft talk and oh ideas and thoughts and prayers. It's like the underpants domes. You know that meme where it's like step one, steal underpants, step two, question mark, step three, profit. <laughs> That's what all of these are because they don't like give any, they never give any, like, they never give you any juice. They just give you a little bit of like, we're going to do good things anyway. Uh, sign here. Okay. Civil society exists to advance the interests of its constituents and to give a meaning or purpose to its members. Okay. Companies aim to generate an economic surplus measurable in profits in the short run and long term value creation in, long, in, in the long run. Capitalism. Oh, yeah. So are people going to read this and be like, that's so different from what we have right now? Yeah. <laughs> like, like anybody reading this is going to be like, cannot think anything, but like, isn't that how the system already works? Like, that's what we were told it does. And the overarching goal for the international community is to preserve peace. Okay, well, you know, you guys have been around for a while and kind of a hard sell in the midst of a genocide and, and, and two near hot wars, but I digress. Do they have weapon manufacturers guys showed up to this? I, Do you know? We'll get into It'll be that. interesting to see. No, we'll get into it. Because um, here's the thing, guys. You can go on their website, and we'll get into that later, but uh, you can look up all the people, all the swamp monsters in bed. With these, oh my god! I'm, I'm gonna jump out a window. They got another. What? Ooh, people and the planet now. It leads to the Open stakeholder together. model as we know today, valid anywhere in the world. When the well-being of people and planet are at the center of business, the four remaining key groups of stakeholders contribute to their betterment. Oh, just like that, it just happens. Crazy. This is this like, is nuts. Correct man. me if I'm wrong, but hasn't the most profit been made off destroying the envi environment for the most part? Yeah, it's going like, to be interesting. Seems like a pretty outright lie, guys. As all of these groups and their goals are interconnected, one cannot succeed if the others fail. Okay, but again, by this whole logic, by this entire logic, this would have already happened somehow. Okay, so they got the people planet thing, the weird, like, almost Ouroboros. You've got 
It's like the infinity sign. And then you got like, I swear to God, the point of all of this is to confuse you so much that you, su- your brain doesn't automatically go to the scary place that like some of this rhetoric is making your brain go to. <clears throat> the model is simple, but it ultimately, it immediately reveals why shareholder primacy and state capitalism lead to suboptimal outcomes. They focus on the more granular and exclusive objectives of profits or prosperity in a particular company or country, rather than the well-being of all people and the planet as a whole. Okay. All right. So we're, we're looking at less towards like multiple governments and more of a possibly one world sort of situation, if you will. I've heard that before somewhere. I just... Uh, <clears throat> By contrast, in the stakeholder model, neither of the more granular objectives is set aside, but the interconnectivity and the overall arching well-being of people and the planet are central, ensuring a more harmonious outcome over time. Okay, so my first question is, if all of these things should be just no die, they should be happening. Why aren't they happening right now under capitalism? Secondly, and this is the biggest one. Okay, if you've read any any kind of theory, they what up, Gold Monarch? Get a get a shout out, people, real quick. What up, Nihilo? Nick, what up, buddy? Thank you guys for tuning in. Hey, oh, Max. It's a pleasure to have you. Old man Barker, always great to have you here. Hey, CBC voter, what's up? So, and for those of y'all who do not know terms for ADHD, what I just fucking did there is called squirreling. It's when you're in the middle of a sentence and you get distracted. I will do it again. (laughs) If you guys haven't noticed, I do it a lot. Mm. So, my point is, my big question There are internal contradictions within the capitalist system. If you're going to lead, leave the whole like, oh, businesses can do some profits as a tree. What is going, what, what what stop gaps, what, what preventative measures are you going to have in place to prevent them from going against all of the other shit you're talking about, which they're doing right now in order to achieve those profits? Because they need to get the profits and giving, giving consideration to those other aspects of what you're presenting here, guys, that hurts their profits. So what are your mechanisms for remedying that? They don't, they don't mention that at all, though. So... That's stakeholder capitalism. Yeah. So that's kind of stakeholder capitalism in a nutshell. Um, My personal, this is just my personal, um, just my personal opinion, because we don't really know a ton about it, because again, a ton of the communication is almost purposefully obtuse. Mm -hmm. Uh, But my personal opinion is this seems like just fascism with a really pretty bow on top. That's that's all I'm seeing here. I've studied yep. stakeholder capitalism pretty much as much as I can see, and that's the only conclusion I can come to. If you guys disagree, um, if anybody has a different take, please uh, let me know. But I can't arrive at any other conclusion than it's like we want to make it really, really pretty and nice and like altruistic. And oh my god, you're such a good person for uh, supporting this, for essentially mm-hmm. just letting the corporations and, and state completely work harmoniously together. Um, It's like letting the cops investigate the cops. It's not going to do anything. It's going to be a revolving door of nothing happening. And we'll continue to be in the same position. Well, no, we won't. It'll continue to get worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's stakeholder capitalism. 